So now, at last, we get to the main course, term structure models. The thing that four bonds acts like Black and Scholes did for, uh, for uh, options. <coughs> what was wrong with what we had? Well, we need to go beyond the included securities. Our statistical model produced something that looked like this. If, if the data looked like the, the blue ones, the three-factor statistical model you saw fits very nicely. Uh, but um, it only fit the included securities. We didn't, you know, what price should we assign to one and a half year bond? Are you allowed to do that linear interpolation? Mm, maybe, maybe not. There's also no economics in it. Uh, is there no arbitrage? How would you hedge? How would you price term structure options? It fits the included data well, but it doesn't tell us how to go on and price other things. It doesn't, and it doesn't tell us that these model prices are, are free from arbitrage opportunities or don't imply huge sharp ratios or, or other trading opportunities. We need a real model. Now, I'm going to show you uh, a very simple version of a term structure model that shows you the ideas in just a couple of equations and, and, and abstracts from the rather large amount of algebra that will end up in real term structure models. So let's try it, and, and you'll see what we get when we're done. Here's the idea. We start by assuming a short rate process. Let's assume that interest rates follow an AR1, mean delta and, and parameter phi. If that's the short rate, that's the first ingredient, a statistical model for the short rate. Our second ingredient is a pricing model. And let's find the other uh, prices by the expectations hypothesis. So the forward rate, the two-year forward rate, is the expected short rate tomorrow. With an AR1, you know how to do that, just phi times y1 minus delta. The three-year forward rate is the expected short rate two years from now. That's just phi squared, and so on and so forth. So if we have that short rate process, and if we find all other prices with the expectations hypothesis, this is what all the prices should be at any moment. Once you got the forward rates, the yields are easy to find. The yield is just the sum of the uh, forward rates up to that date. Or it's a little more complicated. Instead of phi, phi squared, and phi cubed, you have phi plus phi squared plus phi cubed, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you'll see expressions like these as we get to fancier and fancier models. Now, now, that took almost no algebra, but, but relax and enjoy what you just produced. You produced something uh, pretty amazing. You produced an exact one-factor model of the term structure. The factor here is the short rate, and the loadings are uh, 1, phi, phi squared, phi cubed, and so on and so forth. Right? That acts as a factor. The vector of phi's acts as a loading. So we have an exact it predicts an exact single factor model of the term structure. That's why we started with factor models. Next, we're here to describe the cross section. What do, um, what, what do forward rates look like in a slice at any moment in time? Well, uh, if y1 is above its mean, the forward rates look like this. They decline slowly towards delta. If y1 is below its mean, the forward rates go up like that. So this model can describe term structures that look like that at any moment in time. And unlike the statistical model, this makes predictions for every single asset beyond the ones that we use in our data. You can use a model like this to price things that aren't included in the original data. You can use it to price term structure options as well. You can use it to price anything that you can use the expectations hypothesis on. So we did it. In, in about three minutes flat, a single factor model of the term structure that produces fairly reasonable shapes. This is roughly the kinds of things that you've seen in the data. Now you say, I want a better fit in the data. That's not hard. For example, this is a single factor model that sort of combines level and slope. How could we produce a level and slope factor model? How about this one? Let's suppose there's two underlying factors, z which follows a random walk, and x which follows an AR1. And then the one-year rate is z plus x. So this three-equation system is now our short rate process. We've made an assumption, uh, a model of how interest rates vary over time. Given that, how do we find the other ones? Forward rate is expected interest rate. Forward rate is expected interest rate. The expected value of z is always z. The expected value of the x is phi, phi squared, and so on and so forth. And now look what you have. You have a two-factor model of the term structure. The loadings on z are always 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. The loading on x are phi, phi squared, phi cubed, and so on and so forth. 
So you have a level factor, z, and a slope factor, x. The kinds of uh, data it would produce, if, if I had graphed the z here, if z is high, you have an upward sloping and high term structure. You could have a, on another date, you might have a downward sloping and low term structure. Both level and slope can move around. That can fit it even, be even better. So those are the ingredients of a term structure model. But this is the expectations hypothesis. How are we going to produce a real model? Same idea. We're going to write down a short rate process. And then we're going to price all the other securities. But what we're really going to write down is a model for the discount factor, which will generate short rates and also market prices of risk. And then we are going to price other securities by their expected discounted payoffs. We're going to do it right. All it does is it costs us some algebra, but it gets the 1 half sigma squared terms where they belong, which is important in this model.